Hello everyone, today we return back to basics. And by basics, I mean fragrance videos. So that's what we're doing. Um, I've been sort of in a bit of a funk in terms of video filming. Um, I'm in a bit of a transition zone right now in terms of my work, so um, it's been kind of nerve-wracking, lots to do, paperwork raining from the sky, covering me up till I can't breathe. If you're dealing with the government, you know how sometimes these things can be. And so I've been kind of falling off the radar in terms of my fragrance reviews, and uh, today is my attempt to get back into it. So to say, get back onto the metaphorical horse, with no name and and get on with it. So today we're going to be talking about this little guy and this has been empty for a while. I've put it aside because I meant to film a video on this fragrance since the spring. So it, it's been a really long time. It's been empty. It's been in my empties. I've promised in my empties that I will elucidate this uh, um, this uh, fragrance and talk about it, which I am prepared to do today. Um, this is a Hugo Boss orange and I mean obviously you can definitely see It in the in the design of the bottle. I think the bottle is ingeniously designed and actually um, portrays the scent and uh, Communicates to us what this scent is about immediately. It's happy. It's ombre. It is Bright orange. It's it's very pretty. I think um, you know, with all of my minimal leanings in terms of style, I think this is a really, really solid design. I like the cap, I like the sprayer. So the presentation was already quite nice. This is something I inherited from my mom's friend who wasn't wearing it. And so for me, it was a bit of a surprise. It is not a fragrance I would pick out immediately by myself. And it is one of those lessons in in learning to step out of your fragrance um, comfort zone. Of course, you don't have to, but if you are as crazy about perfumes as I am, you want to. Um, and normally, this style of fragrance is so outside of what I consider for purchasing that I would probably not. I would walk right by it and I would not pay attention to it, especially, um, you know, given the fact that I've seen the uh, construction of the scent pyramid. But it's been such a pleasant surprise. It's really, really surprised me and made me rethink my strategy for picking scents. I stay away from fruit chulis mostly, especially fruit chulis with a sweet edible vanilla, which is exactly what this is. Um, rejoice everyone who loves fruity, sweet, girly, yummy fragrances. This one's for you guys. Um, I know that it's a very popular fragrance style and it has been since the end of 90s, beginning of 2000s. People love fruit chulis and fruity florals, which is what this is. Um, and it's a very popular genre that generally makes me cringe a little bit, mostly because most of that genre is teeny bopper and unsophisticated and uninteresting. This is a pleasant, pleasant exception. And again, I would probably have walked by it if it didn't fall into my lap, but for which I'm forever grateful. And as you see, it's an entirely empty bottle, meaning that I've worn that to death. Um, I've been, when I inherited it, it was about 75% full and I've worn it out in a few months. It was that pleasant for me. So this fragrance was released in 2009. So it's already 10 years old. This is by no means a new fragrance. Sienna Miller promoted it. Promo shots were really quite lovely. I, I thought that it was very appropriate how they marketed it. Really, this is a fruity floral with uh, um, top notes according to the manufacturer. I'll tell you what I smell, but this is what they list. You have apple at the top, which okay, I can agree. Uh, there is some appleness there. And then it goes into orange flower and sort of uh, nondescript white florals in general. And then the base is sandalwood. You have very, very edible vanilla, and I'll tell you about that vanilla um, in a little bit more detail. There's olive tree, which I'm not sure what olive tree smells like, but sure, they included that as a note. Um, not a usual, regular thing. So let's start at the top. Um, this fragrance doesn't exactly strike me as an apple fragrance necessarily. It's definitely very fruity, but I could swear I smell some 
like mandarin oranges in there and not the flowers because we know what orange flower is in there and i know what orange flower smells like and that is separate but i feel like it's it's there's something citrus in here um sweet citrus and uh it's not listed as a note but it is there i swear um, it's possible that the orange flower apple combo gives you that effect. Basically, it smells like mandarins um, or oranges or rather fake mandarins and oranges. We'll return to that point. The, the, the white florals I agree with, they are quite nondescript and aren't really playing the supportive role in this whole combination. Um, and downstairs at the base, we have um, sandalwood, which is actually palpable here but it is not a star of the show. It's a very subtle supporting note that really carries the fragrance and only emerges after a few hours of wear. Um, I can find it if I know what to look, if I know that it's there, I can smell it and it's not just in my head, I can find it. But it is much of a very well blended support to carry the scent through instead of really playing any kind of considerable role within the first few hours of wear. Um, sandalwood definitely makes the longevity notable and this is an eau de toilette, not an eau de parfum, but the longevity is still reasonably respectable actually. I get quite a few hours out of it, probably up to seven hours of wear with the fainting of the scent, significant fainting of the scent after maybe hour three or four, but that's a decent for an eau de toilette and I would say fair is much better than most on my skin. Uh, the apple up top that they claim is there, I can smell, but that, that combination with mandarin oranges is um, something that strikes me because I've really smelled and worn this fragrance before I looked up the notes that the manufacturer claims are there, or the description by the manufacturer, but I definitely smelled citrus in there immediately and right away, and it was not a real citrus and I'll explain what I mean by that it's a very charming way to play around with this citrusy goodness if you remember as a kid you probably had uh, experience with eating frozen gelatos or frozen popsicles and that's what a sweet sugary frozen orange popsicle would be it's in here they put it in the bottle um, this really strikes you as a smell from the childhood and it's not just for me I think a lot of people will find this either a very reminiscent or a very happy and immature scent in a way it is not without its own elegance which is a very difficult thing to do with these types of scent the style of scent does not lend itself to sophistication normally you wear this to, to smell like yummy food and happiness. That's why you wear these scents. You don't wear them to come off as, as uh, sophisticated or elevated in any way because that's just not what they do. That's not the purpose of them. Um, and usually I'm not one for these edible sweetie sweet scents and this one, it just landed on me and became a bit of a shock almost because I, I reached for it a ton. The vanilla here is edible and bakery-like and sweet and almost moist. Um, usually the vanillas I prefer are a little bit more elevated, are drier, smell like actual vanilla beans. This doesn't. This smells like, like a vanilla sweetener, really. Um, and I say that in the best possible way, you know, the, the, the uh, fake mandarin in a popsicle plus vanillic sweetie sweet scent. I don't know what kind of witchcraft was applied to make the scent actually um, very childlike, innocent, reminiscent of happy times. It puts a smile on your face and it is not yucky teeny bopper. It is not at all. I'm not sure with all these individual ingredients being so leaning towards cheap, it does not at all when it's all in combination with each other. I think sandalwood has a lot to do with it. I don't know what the heck olive tree smells like, but maybe it also makes a difference. Anyway, those have very happy, very edible, very, um, very uh, childlike notes. They merge into something rather lovely, something very happy. It makes you feel like it's time to go and splash in the lake. It's so, so lovely. Um, I don't know whether I would be purchasing it anytime soon because I have a lot more citruses um, in my rotation right now. And I'll tell you about those in the next video, so keep your eyes peeled for my summer perfume rotation this year. 
Uh, but this was really extremely pleasant for the spring and I think it would work for the summer except for, you know, when you're in uh, 30 degree weather, then, well, don't wear scents at all probably because you will suffocate. Uh, but this baby really was such a pleasant surprise. I would consider repurchasing it in a small roller bowl or a small sprayer. Uh, 50 mils is probably a little too much. I oversaturated my desire to wear a scent like that uh, by wearing it so frequently that I wore it out in just a few months. I believe I've been inherited it in March perhaps and I finished it last month so it probably only served me three to four months and I've gone through most of that bottle um, so I've worn it a ton and it it was present in my favorites for a very good reason it is just it is just so happy so if you want a happy-go-lucky carefree scent um, I'm imagining uh, somebody who you know one of those People who just never grows up completely, but is at the same time smart and charming and witty. Something like that. And it's very, it's a very interesting combination. And I'm very impressed with the way that this scent was blended to retain some level of elevation and sophistication while being what it is, which is a fruity floral with a heavy vanilla base. So if you are a fan of these kinds of scents, I think it's worthwhile to check out. Um, and even myself, who is not a fan of these kinds of scents, was rather impressed with the composition and construction of this. And I will keep my eyes peeled for these kinds of perfumes that are outside of my um, comfort zone. This fragrance really reminded me that I can find good things in all kinds of places and all kinds of genres. And I suppose it's, uh, I've realized that about, about music a long time ago. I'm an omnivore when it comes to music because I can really like a song in whatever genre if this is a kind of song that I like. And you know what, scents are the same. You can find a good gem in every kind of a style or a genre of fragrance creation if you look and uh, give it a chance. So I challenge you guys to go out there and try on fragrances that you wouldn't have normally and that are outside of your um, comfort zone try something new for yourself you might be surprised and you might be um, you might be elevated and excited by the fact that well, you can find a gem somewhere out there in a fragrance category you, you never look at uh, I hope it was fun for you to listen to that's it for today have a wonderful day and good luck bye bye